In this video, I'm going to do a high-level explanation of the Tableau order of operations and how different filters at different stages of the query pipeline can impact the amount of data you work with. This order of operation really defines the order that actions in Tableau are executed, and in Tableau, actions are just another word for operations. Also, knowing how the order of operation works allows you to understand when to use which type of filter and can give you ideas on why certain things like level of detail calculations, data blending, table calculations, and other concepts in Tableau work the way they do. These concepts won't be covered fully in this video, but I will do a deep dive into them in future videos. Here we have a inverse pyramid depicting the order of operations in Tableau, and all the dark blue parts of the pyramid are different filters that you can apply in Tableau. And at the top, you have the raw data, and through different filters, the size of the data that you work with will get more and more compact and decrease as you get to your final output. And the different expressions and calculations seen in light blue here represent when they get executed with respect to the order of operations. So as an example, the fixed level of detail expressions get executed after context filters, but before dimension filters, whereas the include and exclude level of detail expressions get executed after dimension filters. The very first filter that is executed in the Tableau order of operations is an extract filter, which allows you to create a copy of the data locally in your Tableau repository based off of specified filters. And this is useful when you want to work off a smaller subset of the master data set on your own device. Here, I will be using the sample superstore data provided by Tableau to give you an example on the different types of filters within the Tableau order of operations. And to start, we'll go through the extract filter, which can be created by switching from the connection of live to extract. And as you can see, there's already one filter here for this data set. And when you select extract, it adopts that filter. And we can see when we click on edit, and you can see that there's a filter here. You can decide to add more if you would like, and you can also aggregate or keep a specific number of rows. And after you have all your parameters for your extract data, you can click OK. And then when you create a new sheet, it will prompt you to save that extract in the data source repository in Tableau on your local device. So you can save that here and, ex and access it next time. Next up are data source filters which are relatively intuitive and as it states in its name, it's filters for the data source. So filtering data before you even create a new worksheet for analyzing the data. This method of filtering is really useful for data sources that are published to the Tableau server because it helps restrict the data that different users can see when they want to work with the data based on their given permissions. And an example can be filtering sales data based on different regions a company may operate in so that employees from their respective regions will only work with the data accumulated in their own region. And normally database administrators would be the ones working with these filters to optimize the performance of queries sent to their remote database. Data source filters are really easy to work with and you can work with them by going to the data source tab here and let's just keep in mind, currently we have rows of data from the US and we have approximately 10,000 rows of data. So you would just go up to filters here if you wanna filter out some data and you can click on that, add, and then you can filter it by country. If we wanna only see Canadian records, then we click okay. And you can see now our data source has been reduced to 200 rows. And if you wanna remove the filter or edit it, you just click on that filter that you created to edit or remove. Next in the Tableau order of operations are context filters, which allows you to filter out data specifically for one worksheet so that when you create a new worksheet, you still have access to all the data from your data source. This is equivalent to creating a temp table, so a temporary table in a database to work with a smaller subset of data. 
This is useful when you have massive amounts of data, such as a data table with hundreds of millions of rows, which would take forever for Tableau to process calculations and visualizations. So a context filter can be applied to your worksheet to reduce that number of rows to say 500,000, which would allow the calculations and visualizations to be processed much faster. Context filters can be created by dragging a field from your data into the filters tab. And here we'll add the country region into the filters tab. And since we don't, we only wanna see records from the US, we'll deselect Canada. And when we do that, all the Canadian records will disappear. And to change this from a dimension filter to a context filter, you just right click on this pill here and add to context. You can add as many as you would like, but it's recommended to only add context filters when you want to significantly reduce your data size or the performance gains from it will be very minimal. There's also another purpose for adding context filters, and that is if you want to filter data before applying a fixed level of detail expression. I won't go through that here, but I'll definitely go through that concept in a future video. And as you can see here, the sheet has a context filter, but when I move to a new sheet and drag in the country and region out to the view, we can see that Canadian records and US records are still queried from our data source. So adding context filters are only applied to the specific sheet that you add them to. The last three filters focused on filtering the data source for optimizing performance, whereas the filters moving forward will mainly focus on changing the visualizations and data outputs for different analyses. These are also the filters that you'll be working with most of the time in Tableau. The first one we're going to look at is dimension filter, which is used to filter categorical data. So to either include or exclude them in the Tableau worksheet view. Some dimension filter examples are discrete data, like filtering by product categories, countries, different departments, or even finite numbers that are made into bins, like 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, and so on. Dimension filters can be created by dragging discrete fields into the filter tab. So green icons represent measures and blue icons represent discrete. And let's just say when we want to drag in the country and regions field into our filter, we can deselect Canada because we don't want to see the Canadian records. And here we can only see the US records. You can edit the filter by right clicking and editing. So changing that from Canada to US to see Canadian records, or you can show the filter on this side here to easily edit which ones you want to show. Measure filters, on the other hand, are for filtering continuous data, like having a range of sales dates from 2021 to 2022, or when you want to look at sales dates that is greater than or less than a specific amount, such as looking at all sales data over $100,000 or less than $100,000. Measure filters can be created by dragging measure fields into the filter tab. When we drag sales into the filter tab here, we get prompted on how we want to filter on sales. And you can see all of these icons are green, so they're all measures. So let's just say we want to filter based off of some, and here we're given a range of the sales, and let's just say we want to see only above 200,000. So now we only see the records where the sales are greater than 200,000. If we drag the dates field into the filter, you can see they could be dimension fields or measure fields. So depending on which one you choose, it will become a dimension filter or a measure filter. So if we click on this one, the icon is green, it will become a measure filter. And you can see that because the pill here is green. Table calculation filters are used to change the view that is shown without filtering the underlying data that is used to create that view. What this means is that you can change how you want to show the data after all the calculations are complete. And a really useful situation you would want to use this in 
is when you're doing table calculations like moving averages or running totals from several years, but you only want to show the most recent year. Table calculation filters can be more complex because you're creating calculated fields, but these are really useful when you want to view only a portion of your results. And here I have the moving averages based off of the last 11 rows of dates. So all of these are nulls because they're used in the calculation. And if we want to see the results for only 2022, when we try to filter based off of the dimension filter, the underlying data is actually filtered out. So then here, now you have a lot more null values for the year you wanna see. So this is where table calculation filters come into play. And I'll show you how I created these table calculation filters. So first I created a month year custom date because I wanted to have a result in the month year hierarchy. How I did this was I just right clicked on order date to create a custom date and then have the month year hierarchy. Next, I created a calculated field to look up the order dates by month year to be used in a show and hide calculated field. So here's just the lookup function. And in the show and hide calculated field, it's essentially if the lookup date is greater than the year and month, then show or else hide it and end. We can take a look at what these lookup dates actually look like as values. So here it's just converted to a number where it's the year and the month. So that's why when it's greater than 2021, 2021-12, uh, it's going to be in 2022. So we can drag the show and hide here and to show. And now you can see the filter, uh, the filter actually didn't filter out the underlying data and kept the results we wanted to see. I've created a sheet here for reference. And as you can see, 53,280, 53,280 for January, and then 53,057 for February, 53,057 for February. So that concludes the Tableau order of operations and how to use the different filters. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was useful for you.